دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم بحال ونور الحجام انطياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما أنفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا سميع الدعاء يا مجيب رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقلة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Him and sending salawat and salam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we begin the halaqa of uh, the sublime beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is where in, uh, it is collected actually from the book of Imam Muhammad ibn Isa Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi, the famous book, Ash-Shama'il al muhammadiyah So uh, the book that we have here, in it, uh, the author rahmatullah ta'ala, uh, or the publisher also added to that, uh, Imam al-Nawawi, Imam uh, 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 Sharfuddin bin Yahya al-Nawawi rahmatullah ta'ala's short biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Zakariya Yahya ibn Sharf uh, al Nawawi at Damashqi rahimahullah ta'ala said that about his lineage, about the lineage of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And particularly this, uh, this is actually uh, available in his book called Tahdib al-Asma wal lughat Okay, about the introduction to his, uh, uh, his book Tahdib al-Asma wal lughat Now many valuable notes have been added to it by Shaykh Khalid uh, ibn Abdurrahman as Shaya. These have been included in this translation, sometimes translated verbatim and sometimes summarized. Okay. So, the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, son of Abdullah, son of Abdul Muttalib, son of Hashim, son of Abdul Manaf, son of Qusay, son of Kilab, son of Ibn Murrah, son of, uh, son of Murrah, son of Ka'b, son of Lu'ay, Son of Ghalib, son of Fihir, son of uh, son of Malik, son of another, son of uh, Kinana, son of Khuzayma, son of uh, Mudrika, son of Ilyas, son of Mudar, son of Nizar, uh, Nizar, son of Ma'ad, son of Adnan. So this particular lineage that uh, that is just being read is actually. Uh, Imam, uh, uh, Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi sufficed with it in mentioning in his Sahih, the, uh, the book that we know, Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, it is also available in his book Al-Fatih, uh, volume uh, 6, page 162, in, in, uh, in another book called Zad al-Ma'ad, volume 1, page 71. Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi has discussed this issue in Fatih, volume 6, page, uh, uh, pages three, 538 and 539. The nation is agreed to his uh, agreed as to his lineage to this point. After this, however, they differed greatly concerning his lineage to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, uh, our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. The ulama have mentioned that there is nothing authentic concerning this portion of the lineage can be depended upon. Okay, as for the names of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, along with uh, uh, other other names or the kunyas or the agnomens. The famous agnomen or the kunya rather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was Abu al-Qasim Abu al-Qasim Regarding this Imam al-Dhahwi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions uh, it is uh, he mentions it in Tariq al-Islam in page uh, 33 saying that it is reported by the multiple and consecutive meaning mutawatir ahadith or mutawatir riwayat or narration that his agnomen or the kunya was Abu al-Qasim Abu al-Qasim Okay and Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam gave him the kunya. 
Abu Ibrahim. So Jibril alayhi salatu wasalam gave him the kunya Abu Ibrahim. It is according to a book Tahdib Tariq Dimashq. Uh, it is uh, uh, the author of this book is Ibn Asakir rahimahullahu ta'ala. In this book, volume 1, page 278, he mentions that. He also said therein that there is reported by uh, Ad-Darimi rahimahullahu ta'ala and Al-Bayhaqi from Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, it is not contains Ibn Lahi'a, about whom Imam Dhahwi rahmatullahi alayhi said that he is da'if in his book called Tariq al-Islam, page 34. I say it is also recorded by Imam al-Hakim rahmatullahi alayhi in his Mustadrak volume 2, page 604. And also in that isnad, someone called Abu Lahi'a, who is known to be da'if, he, he also is in that chain. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam servants of Allah had many names. Okay, the Imam al uh, and Hafiz, Abu Qasim, Ali ibn, uh, ibn al Hassan, Ibn Hibatul, uh, Hibatullah, Ibn Abdullah al Shafi'i al Dimishqi, famously known as Ibn Asakir rahimahullah ta'ala, devoted a specific chapter to them in his book called Tariq Dimashq, History or, or of uh, Dimashq, which is the Damascus in English. Okay. So again, it is available in Tahdib Tariq Dimashq, volume 1, page 274. As for the point where Rasulullah had many names, it is according to Shaykh Al-Qastalani uh, in Mawahib Al-Laduniya. Uh, okay. Uh, in his, uh, in vol uh, volume 2, page 11, he said that a thing having many names is indicative of its nobility and excellence. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a name, uh, his name was Muhammad, his name was also Ahmad, his name was also Al-Mahi. Okay. From amongst the names are Muhammad, Ahmad, Al-Hashir. Al-Hashir means uh, the gatherer. Al-Aqib means the ultimate. Uh, Al-Muqaffi means the tracker. Al-Mahi, the effacer, Khatamun Nabiyyin, uh, the seal of the prophets, Nabiyul Rahma, the prophet of the mercy, Nabiyul Malhama, the prophet of slaughter. In one report, Nabiyul Malahim, the prophet of the of massacres. Okay, Nabiyul Tawbah, the prophet of mercy. Okay, prophet of repent, uh, repentance. Uh, Al-Fatih, the conqueror. Taha is also another name of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yasin, then Abdullah, the servant of Allah. These are the names uh, the author mentions. Some of the aforementioned are names and others are titles or descriptions of Rasulullah wasallam. All of them are proven by authentic narrations except for the, name, uh, the names that are Al-Fatih, Taha and Yasin. It is not established that these are included amongst the names of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Okay, so... Imam al-Bayhaqi, whose full name is Abu Bakr, Ahmad ibn al-Hussein ibn Ali al-Bayhaqi, rahimahullah ta'ala said that some ulama added to this by saying in the Quran, he, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, called him Rasul. So even if we call, uh, if we say Rasul, some ulama said that it is also name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then another word that Allah mentions, Nabi, Ummi, okay, Shahid, witness, Mubashir, meaning bearer of the good news or the glad tidings, nadir, warner, a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his permission, and a siraj munir, meaning illuminating torch of light. Then ra'uf, kind, rahim, merciful, mudakkir, admonisher. These are actually mentioned in the Quran. He also appointed him as a mercy, blessing, and guide, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed him as mercy, as Allah mentions that وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Okay, then blessing and a guide, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is actually mentioned in Dala'il al-Nubuwa of Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala, volume 1, page 160. With regards to the earlier narration about his name, uh, names Al-Fatih, Taha and Yasin. Okay, uh, Imam al-Dhahbi rahmatullahi alayhi said regarding Al-Fatih, in the section on Sirah in his Tariq Islam, page 33, that it is reported via a weak chain from Abu Abu Tufayl. With regards to Taha, it is reported from Ibn Abbas anhuma, via the root of Al-Kalbi who is Matruk, okay, who is to be rejected. It is established from Ibn Abbas that the meaning of Taha is the call, O person. Okay, in, in Arabic language, when you say Ya, 
Ya Akhi, Ya Muhammad. So Taha means also calling someone like a second person. Okay. So Allah is addressing uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in that way. Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Quran litashqa in Surah Taha. In the and it is actually uh, the the word Taha or the name Taha is from the uh, Nabatian uh, uh, Nabatian language, ancient uh, uh, Aran kingdom in the southwest of Asia, now west of Jordan. Okay. So this is the opinion that was preferred by the Imam of the. Uh, 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 tafsir, Qurani commentators, Ibn Jarir al Tabari, rahmatullahi alayhi. Okay? In his Tafsir, uh, Tafsir al Tabari, volume 16, page 136. As for the name Yasin, it is similar to the way that we have Taha, which is addressing someone. It is not authentically reported that they are included amongst the names of Rasulullah. Rather, they are names of two chapters of the Quran and in this respect are like the chapters of Saad and Noon. Okay? Moving on, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ismi fi al-Qur'ani Muhammad, wa fi al-Injili Ahmad, wa fi al-Tawrati Uhidun, wa innama summitu Uhidun li anni Uhidu an ummati nara jahannam. Okay, hadith is rec recorded by Ibn Adi as mentioned in Tahdib Tariq Dimashq. Okay, it is not contained someone called Ishaq ibn Bishr and he is Kathab. And matruk, meaning that he is liar and he is to be rejected. It is according to Imam al Dhahabi rahmatullahi alayhi in his book called Mizan al I'tidal, volume 1, page 184. Therefore, this hadith cannot be used to affirm the name Uhid. Okay, as for the other two, Muhammad and Ahmad, they are well established in the Quran itself. Okay, Allah mentions Muhammad Rasulullah in Surah Al Fatih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Ya'ti min ba'd ismuhu Ahmad in Surah Al Saf. Okay, so these two are well established names and we can have them. Okay, I say the author uh, Imam Nawi rahmatullahi alayhi, he said that some of these aforementioned names are actually attributes or descriptions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and metaphorically referred to as his names. Okay. The Imam and Al -haf, uh, Hafiz Qadi Abu Bakr ibn Al Arabi Al Maliki rahimahullah ta'ala said in his book called Al Ahwadi fi Sharh al Tirmidhi, the explanation of uh, 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 Sharh of Imam al Tirmidhi rahmatullah alayhi, uh, uh, his collection of books. Okay, uh, it, uh, it is actually mentioned volume 10, volume 10 of uh, Al Ahwadi fi Sharh al Tirmidhi, volume 10, pages 280 to 287. He mentions that some of the Sufis said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 1000 names and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has 1000 names Allah al -musta'an. you see how these narrations are actually infiltrating in our uh, uh, society especially those who are ignorant and those who are emotional and they don't uh, actually uh, align themselves with the true understanding of al Islam okay the, the, this is what they will say and this is something has been ongoing uh, more than thousand years ago, uh, Allah or uh, ab about thousand years ago. So Imam Nawawi mentions that with regards to, uh, with re uh, with regards to their confining the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to one thousand, then this contradicts the authentic hadith. And that hadith says that I ask you by every name you have named yourself with. Okay. As'aluka bi asma bi kulli ismin sammaytahu bi nafsik aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam or revealed in your book aw kama anzalta fi kitabika aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam or taught to one of your creation okay or kept to yourself in the knowledge of the ghayb which is with you okay rasul sallallahu this hadith is in contradiction to what the sufis say when they say that allah has 1000 names and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has 1000 names a'udhu billah it is re recorded by imam ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his musnad volume 1 page page 391 as well as page 452 ibn hibban rahimahullah ta'ala recorded it uh, as well as imam al hakim in his uh, mustadrak volume 1 page 509 this hadith my brothers and sister proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has names that he has kept to himself in his knowledge. Okay, 
not that we just have the uh, idea that we're saying we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 1000 names and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has 1000 names it is actually we are worshiping our desires Allahu al-musta'an as for they are saying that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has 1000 names then the response to this is that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has every beautiful name my brothers and sisters and noble characteristic however what the sufis mention has no dalil to back it up or to support it and actually emanates from their conjectures from their desires from their whims from their guessing they're going to extreme with regards to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they're raising him above his station the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam severely warned us against this putting muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a position the way that the nasara nasara wal ayyad billah took isa alaihi salatu wasallam in a, in, a, in a position okay Ibn al-Arabi, uh, Ibn al-Arabi, uh, al-Maliki rahimahullah ta'ala did not stop there. He continued by saying, as for the names of Allah, then this number is insignificant in comparison to what they really are. As for the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then I have counted only those names that are clearly mentioned in the form of obvious names. And I have so far collected a total of 64 names. Then he mentioned them in detail commenting upon their meanings comprehensively and in an excellent fashion then he said and he has additional names other than these okay regarding the names of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now mother of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his mother was amina bint wahab uh, daughter of Wahab, son of Abd Manaf, son of uh, Zuhra, son of Kilab, son of Murra, son of Kaab, son of Lu'ay, uh, son of Ghalib. Okay. This was uh, his mother's name. As for his birth, Rasulullah sallallahu birth, he was born in the year of the elephant, as we know, Amul Fil. Okay. If we look at uh, 50, 50 days before uh, the uh, incident of Abra uh, Abraha, when Abraha wanted to uh, destroy uh, the Kaaba. Okay, it is also postulated that he was born 30 years after it. Okay, some say. Al-Hakim rahimahullah ta'ala, Abu Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, both of them said that it is postulated that he was born 40 years after it or 10 years after it sorry uh, my apologies it's not 50 days rather 50 years or 40 years after it somewhere along as reported by imam al-hafiz abul qasim ibn asakir rahimahullah ta'ala in his book called tarikh dimashq history of dimashq the correct and the famous opinion is that he was born in the year of the elephant okay the correct and the famous opinion is that he was born in the amul feel the year of the elephant okay Ibrahim al-Munzir al-Hizami, the Shaykh of Imam al-Bukhari, Khalifa ibn Khayyat, and others quoted in a, quoted a consensus, consensus, meaning ijma' concerning this. What is it? That the teacher of uh, uh, Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, Shaykh Ibrahim al-Munzir al-Hizami, as well as Khalifa ibn Khayyat, and others quoted uh, or had uh, have an ijma' that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was born in the year of the elephant. Okay. They have agreed that he was born on Monday in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. In the month of Rabi'ul Awwal on Monday. Okay. No specific date with regards to what Monday. So the ikhtilaf is there. With regards to Rasulullah sallallahu being born on Monday in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi mentions this in his Sahih volume 2 page 820 saying that Rasulullah was asked about fasting on Mondays to which he replied that day that was the day in which I was born and that was the day that revelation first came to me okay wahi or the revelation of the Quran came to Rasulullah first on Monday okay and the day that he was born was Monday okay as for the issue uh, of particular date they differed meaning there is a khilaf as whether the date was second or the eighth or the tenth or the twelfth of the month okay there is a khilaf. these dates quoted reflect uh, the, uh, the four famous opinions okay there is a great deal of difference concerning this it is not possible to determine the correctness of any one opinion with certainty as they all have their prop uh, proponents from amongst the ulama rahimahumullah 
Now, the demise, meaning the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mind you, my brothers and sisters, it is a short biography. Okay, the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He passed away during the forenoon of Monday. Okay, it is uh, after 12th night had passed. Okay, 12th night had passed of Rabi'ul Awal in the year 11 after Hijrah. Now, regarding the forenoon of Monday, the 12th, uh, uh, the 12th of Rabi'ul Awal, okay, after the 12th night had passed, meaning that the night passed and the day started. Some ulama were of the opinion that Rasulullah said after the sun had begun to decline on that day, meaning uh, it would have been 13. Taking to the literal sense of the hadith of Anas bin Malik anhu, as it is recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi. It is mentioned in this hadith that he passed away towards the end of that day. Others said that he died during the uh, uh, forenoon. Okay. As for Imam al-Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, in his book called Fath, which is uh, Sahih al-Bukhari's uh, explanation, volume 8, page 143, he reconciled the two opinions by saying what? He passed away at the point when the sun had begun to decline. In, uh, this is the time when the forenoon is at its hottest and is also the beginning of the end of the day. The second half of the day was, uh, uh, second half of, of the day has commenced. Now, another, uh, another issue that uh, in the year 11 after Hijrah, okay, regarding this, the author uh, Imam Nawi, when he mentioned this, there is a commentator of the ulama. The ulama are agreed that Prophet Muhammad passed away in year 11 after Hijrah. They have agreed that he passed away in the month of Rabi'ul Awal and that it was on Monday. This agreement almost reaching the point of ijma, almost reaching the point of consensus. However, the ulama have deferred to the date that he passed away. Even there is an ikhtilaf about the date that he passed away. And they gave the following dates. Would have been the 1st or the 2nd of Rabi'ul Awal or the 8th of Rabi'ul Awal or the 12th of Rabi'ul Awal or the 13th of Rabi'ul Awal and others. The most convincing opinions that, uh, that is brought over here are three, three convincing opinion. Okay, the most convincing opinion regarding the dates that uh, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu passed away. The second of Rabi'ul Awal. This is the opinion of Imam al hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi and others. The twelfth, this is the opinion of the majority. As for the thirteenth of Rabi'ul Awal, this was the opinion of some of the ulama and indicated to by more than one person of knowledge. Okay, it is actually mentioned this particular three uh, Convincing opinions regarding the death of Rasulullah these are mentioned actually in Fath al-Bari, okay, uh, page, uh, pages 129 and 130. In a book called Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya, in volume 5, pages 275 to 277, these are mentioned too. Imam al-Dhahabi mentions it in his Seerah, okay, page 568, Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad, okay, uh, volume 2, pages 272 to 274. Tariq al-Tabari, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, his book. Volume 3, page 232. Lataif al-Ma'arif, page 113, i.e. in Tahdeeb al-Asma wa lughat the source of this book. Sorry, uh, not the Tahdeeb al-Asma wa lughat Imam al-Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, uh, brought these opinions. So uh, there are three convincing opinions as I mentioned, Imam al-Hafid's opinion, then the majority of the opinion which is 12, and some of the ulama said the 13th as they were indicating forenoon, meaning when the sun was going down on the 12th, okay, to start the 13th. As you know in Arabic, uh, uh, in Islamic calendar, with the sunset actually the new day starts. So he was buried, okay, Oh, sorry, the Islamic calendar commences from the date of Hijrah, as has been previously mentioned. Okay. As for the burial age of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what was the burial age of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? He was buried on Tuesday, when the sun had begun to decline. It is also uh, said that he was buried on the night of Wednesday, and this is something mentioned. Uh, 
by Imam al hafiz Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala in his book called Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume 5, page 291. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala said, the correct opinion is that he remained unburied the whole Monday, Tuesday, and was buried on the night of Wednesday. Okay, his burial took place on the night of Wednesday. And this is the opinion that has been textually reported from more than one Imam, both the earlier as well as the later one. It was the op this opinion that Khalifa, uh, Ibn, uh, Khalifa Khayyat brought in his book called Tariq, page 94, declared with certainty, with absolute certainty. When Rasulullah passed away, my brothers and sisters, he was 63 years old. It is also uh, assumed or postulated that he was 65 or 60 years old. However, the first opinion is most correct and all three opinions have been mentioned in Sahih. Okay, meaning uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari as well as in Sahih Muslim. The ulama have reconciled these ages by saying those who mentioned 60 did not include additional number. Those who mentioned 65 included a year of his birth and death. Those who have mentioned 63 did not. Okay, this is the reconciliation. As for the correct opinion is 63 years and this is also the correct opinion concerning the age of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu as it is mentioned uh, in Sahih Muslim. Uh, then we also uh, see the death of Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he was six, uh, 63 years old. It is also mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Okay, as for the death of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was, uh, 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 as it is mentioned that he was 63 years old, as well as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, when she was 63, uh, uh, 63 years old. Regarding Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we need to refer to Imam al Dhahabi rahmatullahi alayhi's book, Tariq al Islam page 652 and regarding Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha when she died uh, and she was si uh, 63 years old it is mentioned in a book called Seer A'lam al-Nubala by Imam al-Dhahabi rahmatullahi alayhi uh, volume 2 page 193 Al-Hakim Abu Ahmad the Sheikh of Al-Hakim okay so Al-Hakim his ustad Abu uh, uh, his teacher Abu Ahmad then Abu Abdullah it, it, these three said, it is said that the Prophet وسلم, was born on Monday. He was commissioned as a Prophet on Monday. He migrated to Mac, uh, from Mecca to, uh, to Medina on Monday. He entered Medina on Monday. And he passed away on Monday. Now this particular uh, statement of these three ulama are mentioned, uh, is mentioned actually uh, from a uh, narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma by Imam Ahmad ibn Hamad rahmatullahi alayhi in his Musnad volume 1 page 277 as well as it is mentioned in a book called Dala'il al nubuwa volume 7 page 233. It is reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was born circumcised with the umbilical cord already cut. Okay. This is reported in a hadith that is not authentic. Okay, it is a report, but it is not authentic. And included by Ibn al Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi in Al Mawdu'at. The Mawdu'at that is known actually by fabrications. Mawdu'a means fabricated narration. Even for the sake of argument, if it were true, then this is not considered to be from those matter unique to him because historically many people have been born circumcised, as mentioned by Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi. He also mentioned a second opinion on this, stating that Rasulullah was circumcised on the day that the angels split open his breast, okay, to clean his breast, his chest, while he was being breastfed by Halima radiallahu ta'ala anha. He then mentioned a third opinion. Now, Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi mentioned a third opinion, stating that his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, circumcised him on his seventh day, preparing a feast on this occasion and named him Muhammad. This third opinion has been reported from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And Imam al-Dhahbi rahmatullahi alayhi is incl uh, has inclined towards it in his book called Asirah al nabawiyyah page 28. All these are available in uh, Tabaqat al-Kubra. Okay, then Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi sira, then Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi uh, his book Zad al-Ma'ad, then his uh, uh, another book called Tuhfatul Maudud. Okay, these are the books that bring these references. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was shrouded 
being wrapped in three white sheets, none of them being a shirt or turban as is established in the two Sahih, meaning uh, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih uh, Muslim. Okay. Al-Hakim Abu Ahmad said that when Rasulullah was wrapped in his burial sheets, he was placed on his bed at the, at the edge of his grave. Then the people entered group after group praying Salatul Janaza with none of them leading. The first to pray upon him was Al-Abbas, his paternal uncle, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Okay. Then Banu Hashim, then the Muhajirun, then the Ansar, then everybody else. So the eldest of uh, uh, the uncles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then Banu Hashim, those who were from the uh, uh, tribe of Hashim. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was buried and buried by the close family members Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Al-Fadl and Qutham, the two sons of Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then Shukran. All these lowered him in his grave. It is also said that Usama ibn Zayd and Aus ibn Khawla were amongst them. And this is uh, according to Al-Hafid ibn Hajr al-Asqalani in his book called Al-Isabah. Okay, volume 1, page 135. He quoted in uh, the biography of Aus radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Ibn Ishaq mentioned him amongst those who placed him into his grave. And that al tabarani reported this via the same route and that it contains a da'if narrator. But point is that the close family members min bab at targhib if we look uh, look into it that the close family members were the first ones not only just to bury but before burial before lowering the body of rasulullah sallam down they prayed first upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay so banu hashim were the first ones to pray upon rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then were uh, the uh, the Muhajireen, then, uh, then Al-Ansar, the, those who helped, then everybody else, then the children, then the women. Anhum ajma'in. He was buried in, in the Lahd. Okay, Lahd. What is Lahd? Lahd is a cleft in the side of the grave. From amongst the proofs that Rasulullah was buried in a Lahd is the saying of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, which is recorded by Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi, make a Lahd for me and construct sun-dried bricks upon me, just as was done with Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam. So Lahd and therein sun, uh, as the author mentions that he was buried in the Lahd and therein sun dried bricks were constructed on top of him, Rasulullah's uh, qabr. It is said that nine such bricks were employed, then soil was thrown on top and his grave was flattened. Okay, his grave was flattened. This is uh, here mentions that the correct position is that his grave was made into a convex shape, curving outward, as is proven by the hadith recorded by Imam al-Bukhari from Sufyan al-Tamar, that he saw Prophet Sallallahu grave in a convex shape. Ibn Hibban rahimahullah ta'ala in his book of uh, 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 hadith, collection of uh, uh, hadith, volume 14, page 602, he reports from Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu was buried in the lahd with sun-dried bricks constructed on top of him. His grave was raised above the level of the earth by a hand span, okay, by a hand span from the level of the ground. Shu'aib al naud said that its isnad was sahih, meeting the criteria of Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi. So what do we learn from this actually when it comes to burying uh, uh, the deceased? It is necessary that the grave not to be raised more than a hand span above the earth. It is forbidden to excessively raise it. Okay. To build on the top of it or to place candles on it. This is due to the saying of Rasulullah as it is recorded in Muslim Rahmatullahi Alayhi Hadith uh, in his Sahih, uh, Hadith number 666 Do not leave an idol except that you destroy it or a raised grave except that you level it. From amongst the last words of Rasulullah he spoke where Allah cursed the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as masajid. It, this particular hadith of Rasulullah is agreed upon by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Rahimahumallah. So, 
The grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi was flattened with water being sprinkled over it. Then the uh, uh, the Sheikh Al Hakim rahimahullah taala also said it is said that Al Mughira descended into his grave. Okay, grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi But this is not actually authentic. Okay, it is said. Okay, qila. So regarding this, the author mentions over here that. Uh, it, it needs to be checked uh, or referred to a book called Al Bidaya wa Nihaya of Ibn Kathir, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Volume 5, page 290. As for the sprinkling water, this is mentioned by Ibn Hajar, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, in his Talkhis al Habir, okay, uh, Volume 2, page 133. And he said that the Isnad contained Al Waqidi. Okay, the author of Al Mishkat attributed it to Al, al Bayhaqi. Dalal al Nubuwa uh, uh, has this uh, narration as well. And there is someone called Al Waqidi, the name that I mentioned earlier, oh, servants of Allah. The person is to be matruk, okay, or to be rejected in reporting the ahadith. So, the authentic hadith regarding the sprinkling of the water is actually recorded by Ibn Majah, rahmatullahi alayhi. Uh, However, according to, according to Shaykh al-Albani, it was considered da'if or weak. But Ibn Majah considered this to be uh, 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 authentic. As he said that Rasulullah eased, uh, uh, the Messenger of Allah eased Sa'ad into gra uh, uh, his grave uh, and sprinkled water over it. Okay. Ibn Qudama mentions it in Al-Mughni. Volume 3, page 436, he said that it is recommended to sprinkle water over the grave in order to cause its earth to stick together. Okay? In order for, uh, to cause the earth, its earth to stick together. Al-Hakim Abu Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala said, It is said that Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa died when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was 28 months old. Okay, when Prophet was 28 months old. It is also said or postulated or assumed that he was 9 months or 7 months or 2 months and he was not yet born. Okay, so one narration says that one, uh, Muhammad's father Abdullah died, he, uh, he was 28 months old, meaning 2 years and 4 months. Okay, whereas the other narration uh, that has is that he was 9 months or 7 months or 2 months and he was not yet born, meaning that he was in the womb of Amina. Now, this particular narration, the majority of the ulama hold the opinion that the father of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, died while Rasulullah was still in his mother's womb. From amongst the ulama who determined this position to the strongest were Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi alayhi, Al-Zahabi rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi alayhi. This is the literal sense of his saying, okay, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that did he not find you an orphan and give you a refuge? Alam This is in Surah al duha chapter 93, verse 6. The person who is the orphan in the complete sense of the word is the one whose father dies while he is yet unborn. Okay. When someone is called yatim or orphan, you would see that actually the, uh, uh, he is not born or she is not born, okay, yet to be born. <laughs> Rasulullah passed away in Al Madinah, okay. Al Waqidi and his scribe Muhammad ibn Sa'ad both said it is not established that he passed away while Prophet was not yet born, okay. It is according. Uh, it, it is what is mentioned. As for the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abdul Muttalib, passed away when he was eight years old. It is also assumed or postulated that he was six years, leaving him in a care of Abu Talib, his uncle, father of Ali radhiyallahu taala anha. So the famous opinion here we learn is that actually uh, that Abdul Muttalib died when he was eight years old. Okay. And that is when he was given uh, uh, by Abdul Muttalib before he passed away to Abu Talib. Okay. As for the mother of Rasulullah she passed away when he was six years old. And it, uh, it is also postulated that he was four years old at Al-Abwa. Abwa, a place falling between Mecca and al Madinah. So the, so the distance between Makkah and Medina is about 420 kilometers, okay, uh, just, just over 250 miles. 
on uh, and this actually his mother his mother passed away actually on the way back to mecca from al madina okay, uh, al madina after having visited the relatives of the father of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from amongst banu adi ibn najjar uh, uh, ibn najjar so those who are those who are also uh, uh, in mecca as well as in al madina now Rasulullah as the author mentions that he was commissioned as a messenger, as a Rasul to the whole mankind when he was 40 years old. And it is also postulated that he was 40 years and one day. There is another narration that it says that he was 40 years and one day. It is according to Ibn, uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in, uh, in Fath, volume 6, page 164. He declared with the certainty that Rasulullah's age was 40 and 6 months when revelation came to him. When the wahi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is by, the by taking into consideration the narration established in the Sahih that he was commissioned as the turn of the 40th year. That revelation first came to him in the month of Ramadan and the famous position that he was born in Rabi'ul Awwal. After receiving Nubuwa, O servants of Allah, becoming Nabi, he remained in Mecca for 13 years. It is also said that he remained there for 10 or 15 years. Okay, this is, uh, uh, this is what the author says that the correct opinion is that Prophet ﷺ stayed in Mecca for 13 years after having received the Nubuwa, after becoming Nabi of Allah wasallam. This is due to what Imam al-Bukhari mentions in his Sahih from Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah where he said that Rasulullah sallallahu received revelation when he was 40. He then remained in Mecca for 13 years. Then he was commanded to undertake the Hijrah whereupon he migrated to al Madina. He remained in al Madina for 10 years and then passed away. This narration is more established than the one reported by Imam Muslim rahmatullah alayhi, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam remained in Mecca for 15 years as stated by Imam al hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his book called Fath volume 7 page 164. Now I say Imam Nawi is, is saying that it is also more established that, uh, than the narration of Imam Muslim from Urwa that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam stayed in Mecca for 10 years. So, the correct opinion, as I mentioned, that he lived in Mecca after becoming Nabi, after receiving the Prophethood or an Nubuwa for 13 years. In, in those 13 years, we know that for three years, he secretly uh, conveyed the message of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then publicly, he conveyed the message of al Islam uh, or calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 10 years. Then he migrated to al Madina and remained there for 10 years, there is no difference concerning this. He arrived in Al-Madinah on Monday after 12 nights of Rabi' al-Awwal had passed. Okay. So this is established, this is an established uh, uh, Dalil According to Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullah, the Prophet وسلم, arrived in Medina on Monday in the month of Rabi' al Awal. However, they have differed as to the precise date. There is an ikhtilaf regarding the precise date as to when he arrived in al Medina. Okay, it is said the 1st, the 2nd, the 7th, the 13th, the 15th, and the 22nd. The majority hold the opinion that it was the 12th of Rabi' al Awal when he arrived in al Medina. Al-Hakim Rahimahullah Ta'ala said that Rasulullah's pain commenced while he was in the house of Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha on Wednesday with two nights remaining from the month of Safar. Okay, the second month in the Islamic calendar. Now, regarding uh, the pain that commenced and he was in the house of Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It is according to Imam al hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his book called Al-Fatih, volume 8, page 148. He said that Abdul Razzaq reports with a sahih isnad from Asma bint Umais radiallahu ta'ala anha, who said the first time he felt pain was in the house of Maymuna. Okay, as for uh, pain, uh, 
We, where it says that pain commenced while Prophet Sallallahu was in the house of Maimon on Wednesday with two nights remaining from the month of summer, uh, Safar, meaning that before the finishing of the month of Safar, the Islamic calendar month, the second month, it is again in the same book of uh, Imam al hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, uh, uh, Al-Fatih, uh, volume 8. He said that there is a difference concerning how long his sickness or the illness lasted with the majority taking to the opinion that it lasted 13 days the pain that he had before he died it is also mentioned that it was 14 or 12 days okay as for the fostering of rasulullah my brothers and sisters he was first forced fostered by thwaiba okay the freed slave girl of abu lahab okay and abu lahab we know tabat yada abi lahab watab May the hands of uh, uh, Abu Lahab along with him perish. Okay. Freed slave girl of Abu Lahab for some days. Who was Thuwaiba? Now, Thuwaiba, she died in the year 7 after Hijrah, and there is an ikhtilaf with regards to whether she accepted Islam or not. Okay. This was Thuwaiba. As for uh, the fostering of Rasulullah by Thuwaiba for uh, for some days, it is actually mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim. Then he was fostered by Halima bint Abu uh, uh, Dhuwaib. Okay, Abdullah ibn al Harith ibn uh, uh, ibn Harith al Saadiya, shortly known as Halima al Saadiya. It is reported that uh, it is reported from her that she said he would age in one day. And uh, one day what another child would in month. Okay, he would age in one day what another child would age in a month. Okay, this is according to Imam Dhahwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi in the section concerning Sirah in Tariq al-Islam, page 46. Mentions a long narration dealing with the story of Halima as uh, in which this statement takes place. As for the upbringing of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He grew up as an uh, orphan, a yatim, as a yatim, as an orphan, in the care of his grandfather Abdul Muttalib. Then after his death, in the care of his uncle Abu Talib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified him from the filth of Jahiliyyah, from the filth of Jahiliyyah, the pre-Islamic era, day of ignorance. And therefore he never exalted or worshipped any of their idols in his entire life. Never, no prophet has worshipped any idols, okay? Muhammad Islam was no different to that. Neither did he ever attend any of their events of kufr, disbelief, even though they would request him to attend. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented and preserved him from this. It is mentioned in a hadith that is uh, recorded by, uh, reported by Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا عَبَدْتُ صَنَمًا قَطْ وَمَا شَرِبْتُ خَمْرًا قَطْ وَمَا زِلْتُ أَعْرِفُ أَنَّ الَّذِي هُمْ عَلَيْهِ كُفُرٌ I have never worshipped an idol. I have never drank khamar, meaning alcohol. I always knew that what they were upon was disbelief. They were upon kufr. This hadith is recorded by Imam Sayyuti Rahmatullah in Khasais al-Kubra, volume 1, page 150. Referenced it to Abu Nu'aym and Ibn Asakir, rahimahumallah. This is from the great kindness that Allah bestowed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He freed him from the filth of jahiliyyah, from every lowly trait that nowadays we think of, as it was the case during the time of jahiliyyah. Gifted him with every beautiful moral and ma uh, manner to the point that he was known amongst the people as Al-Ameen, the trustworthy one. This due to what they had witnessed of his trustworthiness, his truthful nature, uh, nature and his cleanliness from all impurity. Okay. When he was 22 years old, he went with his uncle Abu Talib to Syria. When he reached Busra, okay. Busra is a, a city in Syria, not the Basra in Iraq, Busra. Okay. He came to the attention of Bahira. 
the monk who recognized him for who he truly was through his characteristics and descriptions he came and took hold of him by his hand and said hada sayyidul alamin hada rasul rabbil alamin hada yab'athuhu allah hujjatan lil alamin okay these are the statements or uh, these were the statements of the monk uh, uh, the monk known as bahira in an area called busra that is in uh, in the east of syria This is the master of all the worlds, Sayyidul Alameen. This is the messenger of Rasulullah. Okay, this is the messenger of the Lord of the worlds. This one has been sent by Allah as a manifest proof for all the worlds. They asked, how did you come to know this? The monk replied, when you came from the mountain path, not a single tree or rock remained except that it fell prostrate and they do not prostrate except to a prophet. Indeed, we have found him to be mentioned in our books. He then asked Abu Talib to take him back for fear of the Jews. Because at that time, it was uh, roamed by the Jews. Okay, uh, the area, even the Syria, uh, the current Syria, it used to be roamed by the Jews. Okay, this is according to, uh, it is mentioned actually uh, in, uh, by Imam Tirmidhi and uh, by Imam Al-Hakim. Okay, it is Sahih. It is me meeting the criteria of Imam Muslim Rahmatullahi Alayhi. Okay, however, Imam, uh, Imam Al-Dhahabi said that he, he thinks that it is Mudu'a, some of it is Batil. In Tariq Al-Islam, he said this hadith is extremely Batil. Ibn Kathir in his book called Bida al Bida wa Nihai, he declared it to be strange due to its mentioning Abu Bakr and Bilal in some of its versions. Okay, and in a Seerah, he said that its narrators were trustworthy and precise. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his book called Al-Isaba, he said that the narrators of this hadith are trustworthy, are precise, but the mention of Abu Bakr and Bilal is munkar and, and, uh, and a mistake on the part of the narrator. Sheikh al-Albani, Sahih al-Tirmidhi uh, and Mishkat stated uh, that the hadith was sahih, but the mention of Bilal was mistake. The mention of Bilal was munkar, disliked. Then, later, Prophet ﷺ left a second time for Syria, again stopping at the marketplace of Busra. This time, with who? With Maisira, the servant of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, in order to trade on her behalf. Okay, this is according to Imam al-Dhahabib in Tariq al-Islam. He said that Al-Muhamili reported this narration via Abdullah ibn Shabib, and he is weak. Okay. But there was, uh, uh, there, uh, there was a, uh, uh, an, an inc uh, incident where Rasulullah actually went to Syria on behalf of Khadija bint Khwailid radiallahu ta'ala anha. This was before he, uh, Prophet Muhammad married Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. Prophet when he married Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she, uh, he was 25 years old. It is according to uh, Fathul Bari, the Sharh Sahih al-Bukhari. As for Khadija, who was she? She is Umm al-Qasim bint Khuwailid ibn Asad. Umm al-Qasim, which was the kunya of uh, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was daughter of Khuwailid, son of Asad, son of Abdul Uzza, son of Qusay. And it is at this point that her lineage meets the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so from Qusay ibn Kilab, you know, from Kilab, uh, it goes up all the way to uh, to the names that I mentioned at the beginning of the halaqa, okay, uh, from uh, from Qusay ibn Kilab ibn Murra ibn Ka'b ibn Lu'ay, uh, Lu'ay ibn Ghalib ibn Fihir. So, this was her. So basically, they were uh, from the same lineage. She is the mother of his children and the first to believe in him. Very first to believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She had many virtues. She was intelligent. She was noble. Okay, as it is, uh, it is uh, 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 as it was obvious, she was religious from among the inhabitants of Jannah. Prophet ﷺ used to praise her extensively and miss her to the point that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha would fail as jealous of her even though she had passed away. She was 40 years old when Prophet ﷺ married her and they remained married for 15 years with his marrying no other. She died three years before the hijrah. Okay, this is mentioned in Fatah al-Bari li Sharh Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 7, uh, page 134, and in a Sira, uh, page 2, uh, volume 2, page 109. 
When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left al Madina, undertaking Hijrah, okay, he was accompanied by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Okay, when Prophet Sallallahu left for al Madina, okay, he was accompanied by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his freed slave Amir ibn Fuhayrah. Their guide was Abdullah ibn Urayqit al-Layfi, who was a kafir and it is not known that he accepted Islam. Okay, this particular statement is uh, where the Imam Nawi said that with regards to the Hijrah and the story of Abu Bakr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that uh, if you do not aid him, Prophet, Prophet uh, Allah has already aided him when those who disbelieved had driven him out of Mecca as one of two. إلا تنصروه فقد نصره الله إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا ثاني اثنين إذ هما في الغار when they were in the cave إذ يقول لصاحبه and he Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said to his companion لا تحزن إن الله معنا do not grieve indeed Allah is with us this is in chapter 9 verse 40 surah al-tawbah so all these that we come across actually about Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم we see that Prophet ﷺ was prepared to take this journey as a Nabi, okay? And this is what made the Islam to be successful later on because Prophet ﷺ was patient. Sahaba radiallahu anhu learned patience from, uh, 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 patience from Rasulullah ﷺ. And due to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are seeing the Islam the way it is. We are understanding Islam. Inshallah, next halaqa will go through the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all our good actions, to give us tawfiq to imitate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma amin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the suhbah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to drink from the al-hawd, al-kawthar with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Allahumma amin. Hatha ma'indi wal ilmu inda Allahi alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib. In asabt fa min Allahi wahdah wa in akhtat fa min nafsi wa shaytan. Fa Allahu wa rasuluhu bari'an. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdihi. حمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته